In this video, we will talk about the book of Ecclesiastes and its background. We will go over two different types of ancient philosophy, including Stoicism and Epicureanism, that some scholars argue are related to the book of Ecclesiastes. We will also discuss the Persian Empire around the time of the composition of Ecclesiastes, as well as the possibility that Zoroastrianism, a Persian religion, had some influence on the book of Ecclesiastes. The name Ecclesiastes is actually a Latin translation of the Greek word for the Hebrew kohelet, or gatherer. In Hebrew, the idea of a gatherer, or kohelet, means to gather together parts of wisdom into one composition. The idea of the author of Ecclesiastes being a gatherer is typically understood as a preacher, someone who is gathering together people. The book of Ecclesiastes was more than likely written after the exile in 586 BCE. Most scholars date the composition of Ecclesiastes between 450 and 180 BCE. More scholars lean on the earlier time period because of Persian loanwords, which we'll talk about in a bit. However, some scholars argue that the Greek philosophical ideas that show up in the text point to a later composition date. There are two major ideas on when the book was written. Most scholars argue that the book was written sometime during the Persian period, from 539 to 332 BCE. During this time period, the Jews were allowed to return from exile and rebuild the temple. Most scholars point to this period because of the economy and the situation that was going on there, which we will talk about later in this video, as well as Persian loanwords. However, other scholars argue that the book was composed during the Hellenistic period from 332 to 63 BCE because of the influence, possibly, of Greek philosophical ideas on the text. The first type of Greek philosophy that some scholars point to in the book of Ecclesiastes is Stoicism. Stoicism is a 3rd century Athenian school of thought founded by Zeno of Citium. There are a few major ideas that make up Stoicism. The first of these is that virtue is the most important thing to be obtained, and to obtain virtue one must have knowledge. The other idea is that to have wisdom and to be wise means to live alongside the divine reason, or something greater than oneself, some kind of ultimate reality. Another idea that is often associated with Stoicism is that a Stoic, or someone who is wise and virtuous, should not feel pain and pleasure in the same way that other people might. As an example from Ecclesiastes that some point to, when arguing that Stoicism is part of this book, is Ecclesiastes 2, 22-24, which says, What do mortals get from all the toil and strain with which they toil under the sun? For all their days are full of pain, and their work is a vexation. Even at night their minds do not rest. This also is vanity. There is nothing better for mortals than to eat and drink and find enjoyment in their toil. As a comparison, there's also a quote here from Seneca, who is a Stoic. He says, True happiness is to enjoy the present, without anxious dependence on the future, not to amuse ourselves with either hopes or fears, but to rest satisfied with what we have, which is sufficient, for he that is so wants nothing. The greatest blessings of mankind are within us and within our reach. A wise man is content with his lot, whatever it may be, without wishing for what he has not. The other school of thought that some scholars point to in the book of Ecclesiastes is Epicureanism. Epicureanism was also a 3rd century Athenian school of thought, but this one founded by Epicurus. 
Two of the major ideas in Epicureanism are an argument against determinism, or the idea that some outside forces control everything. Epicurus argued that humans had free will, rather than the gods controlling all of their actions. The other idea is hedonism, or an idea of taking part in pleasure of daily life rather than rejecting pleasure outright, or not taking part in it because of fear of death or fear of the gods. For example, in Ecclesiastes 8.15, the author writes, So I commend enjoyment, for there is nothing better for people under the sun than to eat and drink and enjoy themselves, for this will go with them in their toil through the days of life that God gives them under the sun. Again, for comparison, we have a quote from Epicurus, which argues, We must therefore pursue the things that make for happiness, seeing that when happiness is present, we have everything. But when it is absent, we do, not, we do everything to possess it. While some scholars argue that Greek philosophy plays a major role in the book of Ecclesiastes, others argue that the book was written before the Greek philosophers, sometime during the Persian Empire. For these scholars, they often point to the Persian economy as the inspiration for Koheleth's discussion of money and rejecting money for its own wealth. One of the major things going on in the Persian economy at this time was the creation of coinage. The Persian economy saw a major boost and coins were created as a way to exchange money with other people rather than simply trading goods. One of the coins created during the reign of Darius I was called the Derek, which has his face on it that you can see here. However, rather than coins simply being used to buy and trade goods, coins were often collected for their own wealth. Just like one might see people hoarding money today to accumulate wealth and have that to brag about, this was going on during the Persian Empire. What we see in Ecclesiastes is an argument against this. In Ecclesiastes 5.10, Koheleth writes, The lover of money will not be satisfied with money, nor their lover of wealth with gain. This also is vanity. Koheleth seems concerned with showing the reader that loving money simply for its own good is not to be desired because it is simply vanity. However, using this money to obtain food, drink, and other commodities is acceptable. Alongside the Greek philosophy and Persian economy, some point to Zoroastrianism as an influence on the book of Ecclesiastes, the Hebrew Bible, and the Israelite tradition as well. Zoroastrianism is often argued to be the oldest world religion, beginning around the second millennium BCE. However, the figure of Zoroaster, or Zarathustra, probably came about in the 7th or 6th century BCE, around the time of the Persian Empire. Some argue that Zoroastrianism is actually the foundation of Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, because many of the ideas are similar. One of the ideas is that there is a supreme good god named Ahura Mazda, which you can see in the image at the top. The ideas set forth in Zoroastrianism are often dualistic, that there is a good force, Ahura Mazda, against an evil force. We also get the idea of free will. Similar to what we saw with Epicurus, who argued against determinism, or the idea that the gods had supreme control over all of the workings of Earth, Zoroastrianism argues that humans have their own free will to make their own path and their own journey. Now that we have reached the end of this video, you should be able to explain the background of the book of Ecclesiastes. 
describes Stoicism, Epicureanism, and Zoroastrianism, as well as the economy of the Persian Empire. And evaluate the connection, or lack thereof, between these schools of thought and the content of the Book of Ecclesiastes.